Huawei's P60 Pro now has its global release. It's just launched today. And I've had this phone now for a week. I've had a real good chance to get in and test all of its capabilities out. And more so because I went on a safari with Huawei. So yes, disclosure here that they did pay for that trip. They sent me over to the UK for a night safari just to test out the capabilities and low light performance of the set of cameras we have with the P60 Pro. Now what really impresses me is its main camera. It has a mechanical variable aperture. So it goes from a very bright and wide f1.4 right up to f4.0, but we do get eight points in between. So that's why it's a proper mechanical aperture, unlike other brands, which you can only swap from being closed and completely wide open, only two settings. No, this gives you the full range there. It's powered by the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 with 4G modem. My model here has 256 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 storage, 88 watt supercharging, 50 watt wireless charging, and the screen, well, that is 120 hertz max refresh. It's an OLED screen, 6.67 inches. Along with our P60 Pro in the box, you will find a SIM tray tool, a clear TPU case. Now it has a raised edge for where the camera module is to protect this part here to protect the main lens and a Type-C to Type-A cable. The charger that is included, this is their supercharge and it is 88 watts. There's a Type-C port below it too, as well as the Type-A and it can be used with the Huawei laptops to charge them, which is great. That means you only need to take just the single smaller charger with you. So this color I have is the Rococo Pearl, they do call it. Now, I like this because every single back of them is slightly different. They are unique in that way. And it looks almost like marble too in the light, so very different. You can see how it reflects and it shines, the different textures within it. And I just like it because it is something that you don't see on other phones. So it makes it stand out a little bit. Also this too, the camera module itself almost looks like a camera, doesn't it? Because we've got the lens there. This could be one of the flashes and this could be um, a sensor there too. So we do have a 10 color spectrum sensor right here. We've got our main camera. So that's 48 megapixels. And this does have that variable aperture within it. So this is f stop 1.4 up to four, so it can close right up and when it opens right up, but we also get various different stages in between which you don't get with others. There is laser assist autofocus, it has optical image stabilization. We also do then have a telephoto camera. Now this is periscopic, it's 3.5 times optical zoom. And then we do have here our ultra wide, which is 13 megapixels, it's f2.2 that one. So the periscopic camera, that's a 90 millimeter equivalent and it does have optical image stabilization. Looking at the bottom here, we have our SIM tray. So it does take two nano SIMs. We have an IP68 dust and water resistance too with this phone, a loudspeaker here, Type-C port is full spec, so video out fast, transfers, we've got their desktop mode too, and this is our microphone here. So it's curved metal frame, does feel very good as you'd expect for a premium flagship. And then just along the side right here, this is curved, the metal curved glass back, and we have our metal power and volume up and down buttons there, some antenna lines. And then right up the top, IR transmitter, the loudspeaker, and our secondary microphone. The phone does have curved glass on the edges, which does make it a little bit more comfortable to hold in hand. It's 200 grams, the weight of it. And because of the curvature, yes, so when you do swipe, for example, to go back with gestures, when you've got something that's open, you swipe along here, does make that a little bit more comfortable without having the screen protector dig into you. But I have noticed this, that of course, on those edges, you get a bit of color shifting. You can see taking place there with this LTPO OLED screen. So it's 6.67 inches, this particular screen here, and the resolution is 1220 by 2700. It's got a 440 PPI to it, so it does look very sharp. And our front facing camera, this supports 4K video, 30 frames per second and 60. It is a 13 megapixel ultra wide. So unlike other brands that are only supporting 1080p, we do get the 4K. I love that. And I'd also love the fact that it's an ultra wide camera, the front facing camera here, so you can fit a lot more in the shot. Now, if you've got a keen eye, you would have noticed here that I'm only connected up to 4G. That's because with the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 we have here, this version only has a 4G modem. 
a little more now on that screen here. So very important, we need to have a fantastic screen. You've got to have something that's good because this is what you're always using, what you're looking at. The touch rate is good. Now the screen does support a 1440 pulse width modulation and so far my time using it, I have not seen any flicker whatsoever, no banding. And you can see now on camera that there is none of the banding which I sometimes get with other brands. It seems to be absolutely rock solid in that regard if you're very fussy with your displays, I am myself. So 120 hertz, when you first get it, there are some options for the resolution and the refresh rate. So you can lower it down. Now by default it's on smart resolution I've forced it onto high because I just want it to look a little bit sharper. And what about that brightness too? So in my tests here with my measuring of my equipment that I do have, I'm getting just over a thousand nits with the screen and I can make it out in direct sunlight perfectly fine. In fact, it seems to look clearer than other phones that have brightness claims of 13, 14, and even sometimes 2000 nits peak. I don't know why that is. Uh, but it seems to be very, very clear and I've had no problems with it whatsoever. Now the refresh rate options, again, you can override this. Sadly, there's no 90 Hertz in here. I would have liked to have seen that. That's a very good in between power saving and fluidity, but you can keep it on dynamic to get that refresh rate that's gonna be just changing and saving a bit on battery life there, which is what I'm on at the moment. I found it to be fine and I haven't actually noticed it swapping over. So you have your pretty standard options in here like adjusting the white balance, color modes, that is all there, that's all clear. And you do have your blue light filter, dark mode, and all of that good stuff is of course there. Now touch response, very good. No issues with that at all. The P60 Pro is running EMUI. Now this is version 13 and I did get an update for this and you'll see a security patch level of March the 1st. Now I know this question's gonna come up as it always does. What about your favorite apps that you get out of Google Play Store. Well, we don't have Play Store on this phone, but there is many ways to get those applications. And I've got Twitter on here, Netflix, working, WhatsApp, everything I need is there working just fine. And then if there's anything that I do essentially need that I must have that is still part of G apps, uh, then you're gonna find that part of GMS, you can use this, G space. And that is how I have Google Maps, which by the way, yes, you can see, Google Maps does work on it. And I do have Android Auto. Now Android Auto, it'll load, but when I plug in into my car, you'll see that this screen pops up. That doesn't give me the option there for Android Auto. So this is why Android Auto does not seem to work unless there is a way around this. It is probably because it needs something with Google Framework or it's asking for that and it's just not gonna give me that option from the pop-up menu which is unfortunate. Now, if you need a lot of those apps, your typical apps, you will find them or where to get them through this, which of course is App Gallery. So this was me searching before, just WhatsApp. If I was to type in Twitter, it'll come up. So you can see, okay, there's where I can get it. Now it's not coming directly from App Gallery, but it will give me a website where I can download the APK file. I've already got it. You can see Twitter and yes, it does run fine, but it'll give you that option. So you can go over then, it'll send you over to official sites, to download the APK file, or it will just send you over to APK Pure, a site that does have those files where you can just download, install them, and you can see I have everything that I need and I can survive without having the G apps. And there are alternatives from Huawei as well that are very good, like Pedal Maps instead of Google Maps. And you've got others in there, like you can use their email client to still get Gmail and using Gspace, there's always that final alternative if nothing else works for you. So it for me it just boils down to the fact that I don't have my bought applications through Google Play. Android Auto doesn't seem to work at the moment. That's really it. The performance of EMUI 13 here, very good. I've seen no lags, no starters, no issues, no problems, no frame dips, and even keeping it on that smart mode with the refresh rate that I just showed you before when we looked at it, I do not see it actually changing over when you've got it on the dynamic dynamic refresh rate there. I have not seen it swapping over between say 60 and 120. You don't notice any lag when it does that. And as you can just see from there, the animations are all looking good. It feels very well optimized and it's stable. Now, when you turn on your P60 Pro for the first time and you get into the UI, you're gonna be greeted with all of this bloatware. Now, this, I do say the same thing to all brands, really. I point this out that 
it needs to be reduced. We need to have just a little bit less of this bloatware because it's quite annoying. Now they do also have these placeholders for suggested apps. I know they're trying to help people get applications they want, but it's a little on the annoying side. So you do have to spend five or 10 minutes or so kind of clearing up those applications and removing these. At least the apps aren't installed, but you still have to go in, select them, get rid of them. And it's kind of annoying. So I do hope that they can just tone down on that a little bit. So I mentioned just before that banking apps aren't gonna be supported, unfortunately, and that is because without the Google Play framework, Google services here, it fails the safety net status. So that is probably one of the bigger things here with this phone for some people, but it has to be mentioned, of course, so you are at least aware. I do hope that they can somehow get around that and fix it. So camera two API support for those cameras, it's full, not quite level three, which would be better, but it should still with full, be able to work with open camera Gcam ports if you wanted to test something out. So Widevine Level Cert 1, we do have that. This is in fact the screenshot from Netflix that it does work in full HD, which is great, but we don't have HDR, but at least it's full HD. It looks good. It's not in that terrible looking low resolution standard definition. No, none of that. Internal storage speed, so UFS 3.1, very quick, look at that, okay. The uh, random writes are really high there. Um, and this, of course, being the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, we don't have UFS 4.0. So charging time to go from 14% up to, it was 100, you can see it here at the top. It timed out here for some reason, counting it properly. It was just over 40 minutes for me. So it is quick to charge and the battery capacity is 4,815 milliamp hours. Uh, this isn't correct. Don't worry about that. It's because Antutu hasn't read it correctly, the rate it was charging. So it thinks that the battery is not in a healthy state, but it's brand new. Of course it is. And here we do have Antutu. So fast, very good scores here, good performance. Some of the other options you do get with the P60 Pro are useful. So we do have reverse wireless charging. If you ever needed to use that to charge up, say, some wireless charge supporting earbuds, then you can do it. You've got launch manager as well for battery saving to stop any applications automatically launching that can block them, which is good. And of course, you do have the wireless charging, which is 50 watts with this particular model here. So that's going to take about an hour and 15 minutes. It's quite a bit slower than the 88 watt wire charging, of course, because it's a completely different rate there, but still 50 is quite high. And battery health, you have this, which I do like to see. So custom limit. This is something you get with laptops normally that you can limit it from fully charging the battery because it's not good for the cell life to have them just sitting around at 100% or to spend any time really fully charged. That's how they can degrade a little bit in their capacity. So setting this means that you're able to just get it to fully charge up. If you wanted to, you can set that then to, okay, I only want 80%. And this is gonna prolong the life of the battery. And I wanna see more manufacturers adding that option. I think it's great. It's moved over from the laptops and now present in the phones too as well, which is fantastic. You've got your performance mode and power saving mode too there as well, if you wanted to use those. If you game a lot and you want maximum performance, this does help a little just boosting that up. But the trade-off is the phone will get even warmer too when you game, but you get that added performance. And then onto battery life, very solid, good performance here from the P60 Pro. So almost eight hours of on-screen time, that's using the smart resolution and the dynamic refresh rate, mind you. And if you do force it to 120 hertz and the highest resolution, you're looking then, I would say about six and a half, seven hours. With the benchmark that I do for battery life here that you can compare to all my other phone reviews, it did manage to get 10 hours and five minutes, which is a very good result. So real world, it will be about that, about seven hours or so, which is on par and around what I get with other phones that also do have up to 120 hertz refresh rates. So great battery life from the P60 Pro. So for audio, there is no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, but you just use a Type-C port to get around that and the quality is good, just like the loudspeaker. So we've got a top firing one right here, bottom speaker, this is a sample, 100% volume. Just to give you an idea of what it sounds like, it's good. I don't see anyone complaining about this loudspeaker. Good loudness, a little hint of bass in there. The mids are good there too as well, and some treble, some highs.
The gaming performance, Genshin Impact, is running fine on the highest settings. I do see the frame rate dip down into the lower 50s. With the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, it does still play this game really quite well. And one of the big things was, however, because I don't have play games, I lost my main save game, and I've had to start again here, and I've logged in via Twitter using the Twitter app. That at least did work. So this is why I'm back at level 4 and not level 20 like my other saves. Now the longer you start to game, the warmer the phone will start to get. I have measured on the back of it, it getting up to 47 degrees. Just around where the camera is here and around the frame does get a little hot to the touch, but nowhere near as hot as the Xiaomi 13 Ultra that I've just started to review and test as well. That phone gets up to 52 degrees, the frame of it. And this is 47, 48 degrees. So overall, good gaming performance, as expected, out of the spec, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. And over to our video performance now. So this is the front-facing camera, 13 megapixels. It's an ultra-wide camera, so I've got it in the default, which is 0.8. This is now in the wide setting, and you can see you can fit a lot more in, which is great. And I love having ultra-wide cameras with a front-facing camera. So we've got 4K 30 and 4K 60 with this front-facing camera. This is now the one times. So it still has quite a bit of a crop there. And you'll see as I walk forward, the electronic image stabilization seems to be pretty good. Now the audio, it's not bad, the sound of it, but the bit rate here is only 96 kilobits per second. So at times I just think it sounds a little scratchy. And I do hope that while we can go back to the 192 that I believe they were using before, it seems to be a bit of a mistake here that they went with a default low bit rate of 96 kilobits per second. But as it goes for front-facing cameras here. I think this quality is very decent and great to see, of course, that 4K 60 and 4K 30 that flagships should have. And this is our video. So we've got 4K 30 frames per second and 60. With our ultra-wide, you can swap over to the main lens. This is the ultra-wide at the moment, just so I can show you this spectacular view. And then when I start to zoom here, when I get to one times, which is now, you see it swaps over the lens. So electronic and optical image stabilization with this main camera. Camera's also good. The main one, the stabilization for something like this, just following my daughter on her little push scooter. And on the fly, I can swap back over to the ultra wide if I wanted to. And then go into the main camera again. And just keep zooming as she goes. You can see it swapped over to the 3.2 times optical camera. Down the ranks. Wow. So on a normal feed uh, on a normal feeding day when they get fed, they get fed from the rooftop on the right. So Queen is sits at the concrete in front, gets first dibs. The high rankers sit on the right hand side of the rocks. Anyone who's a low ranker sits on the left hand side. And there was a time uh, back in about October, November. So one of the first things I wanted to do was try out the mechanical aperture. I forced it to 1.4 and I got that amazing shot there of the bumblebee. This one of my daughter is a great option to have for portraits if you've got hair flying all over the place because you see with these portrait photos they look good at first glance but then when you have a look at the stitching with my daughter's hair it's very difficult for them to do that but then you can just go to the manual aperture. This one here is just auto mode of my cat Vera. I think it came out really well. Look at the detail on her fur and this is a ultra wide selfie shot that I took in the UK. The 13 megapixel ultra wide can take a very good shot here. Of course, this is perfect conditions at the moment. And here is another one of those aperture mode shots. So I forced again F1. Point, I think that was about 1.6. Now the zoom camera, this is 10 times. So it's not all optical. It's optical and digital. Did a very good job. And in some of these shots here, we were moving about in a Jeep on the safari. And by then, our light was starting to fade as the sun was setting. So this shot here, that's the main camera. And then this is the 10 times zoom. Not bad at all, considering we are starting to get into almost low light conditions now. But it does look a lot brighter than what it really was. So for me, the giraffes were the best. They are such beautiful, elegant animals when you see them run. And I managed to get some really good shots here with the P60 Pro with its cameras. Really good performance. And this is my favorite one here. So that is 10 times zoom shot. And when you crop in, you can see that, yes, it's a little blurry. But do remember, this is the sun is setting. It's quite low light now. So for a zoom camera, it did a fantastic job. And then this shot here was me with the main camera testing out the night shot performance. So the room was almost completely dark. You could barely see anything. 
and yet look at the photo it managed to capture using its very bright and wide open f 1.4 mechanical aperture other night shots i thought did come out excellent you can see this one of the old mansion and the tree outside that they did have some light bulbs on it i think it captured it really quite well and then this shot here too of the fire again this was probably about two o'clock in the morning or something i took this photo and it captures a lot of detail now macro shots they are also great it does use the zoom camera for the macros you can see very fine details like bits of pollen so huawei does have here another winner stunning camera performance from it Considering the fact that with the Safari, we were sitting in a Jeep that was often moving about, it was low light conditions, and I was using the zoom camera a lot. It's pretty impressive there what this camera can do, and I really do love the tech that's gone into that mechanical variable aperture. The fact that we can go from a very bright f1.4 up to f4.0, and you get anything in between there too that you want that you're able to select. So the battery life, good, very solid with it. You can get around seven to eight hours of on-screen time if you run the smart resolution and then the dynamic refresh rate with it. 88 watt charging, 50 watt wireless charging, and it does have video out too. So what is missing from it is that we don't have, of course, the 5G. Not an issue for me because my 5G in this area is actually pretty much fake. Uh, we don't have Android Auto, even though you can install it. Now, all of the favorite apps out there that you commonly run, as I mentioned in this video, you should be able to get pretty much everything you need. However, banking apps won't work without the, the safety net. It doesn't have that without the Google framework, of course. So it has those two cons there. And the third for me is the video audio. While it doesn't sound too bad, the bit rate is a little low. It's 96 kilobits per second. So it's a simple change for Huawei with a firmware update. I hope that they can correct that. Besides those little niggles there, you've got, I think, one of the best in terms of camera performance here that you can get currently with Android. It's got to be in the top three here. I might later on do a camera comparison just to confirm what I'm already seeing with the Huawei P60 Pro. So thank you so much for watching this review. Do hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.